Let's talk cricket on this Tuesday edition of the Sportsman Zone. West Indies were hoping to complete a rare series win against India on Tuesday, but the tourists fought back to win the third T20 International by seven wickets at Providence in Guyana. Electing to bat, Brandon King 42 and Robin Powell 40 from 19 led the Windies to a respectable 159 for five of their 20 overs. They were assisted by Carl Mears, who struck 25 of 20, and Nicholas per and 20 from 12 deliveries. Left arm spinner Kuldeep Yadav ended as the best Indian bowler with 3 for 28. Surya Kumar Yadav then made light work of the visitors' pursuit of 160, leading with 83 before being dismissed by Alzari Joseph. However, 20 year old Tilak Varma, in only his third international match, pushed India over the line with 49 from 37 deliveries. For the Windies, Joseph was pick of the bowler with 2 for 25, while Obed McCoy took the other wicket. Here to help us review today's matches, international cricket commentator Nikhil Utamchandani. Nikhil, it's great to have you back on the Sports Mag Zone. First of all, how was your weekend? Was it as long as ours? Yeah, it was brilliant, man. Great to see some good cricket and other sports going around the world. Yes, he says like he only watched cricket. Let's talk about the West Indies performance in this third T20 international nickel. A seven-wicket defeat uh, coming off uh, a tight two-wicket victory in the second T20 on Sunday. What did you make of today's effort? Yeah, I think a performance like this was long overdue from an Indian perspective. But I still think it's a game where the West Indies will be disappointed because... I look at where they went wrong and I look to that power play when they batted first and I think it's things where they believe that they can correct themselves. Pushing a bit hard in those first six overs and then I think sometimes you just have to take your hat off to, to a performance like we saw from Surya Kumar Yadav. He was just unstoppable today and India, I think it's good for the series and also good for them to see them produce that bit of fight by a young team but they can rely on experience of Sky to come good at this time. But from a West Indies perspective, I think a lot of positives to take, given the fact that, as I said before, I think it was unforced errors which are correctable and which can go a long way in terms of winning this series. They're only one game away. Right, and just a quick comment on Tilak Varma. Um, I felt as if, you know, he's been having a brilliant series. And for me, the we can take a couple of lessons out of, you know, what we've seen from his performances, the manner in which he's been finishing games given the opportunity. Yeah, I spoke on the last episode about the fearlessness, but today was a real eye-opener at 20 years old to see the maturity as well because Surya Kumar Yadav was unstoppable at the other end and he was able to just restrain himself and play very smartly to maintain his position at the crease and then, of course, see the game as deep as possible to win it for his team. It's a pity he didn't get to his first, the second 50, sorry. But still, it's a innings that I think probably... I would say was better than the second one because if he got out a bit earlier right after Surya Kumar Yadav was dismissed, the game could have been very different. So to show that maturity at just 20 years old and in all three matches to be able to produce that level of consistency and he's a left hand on top of that, I think the Indians will be looking at him as one for the future in both this format and the one international format. Right, and Nicholas Puran, 20 of 12 balls. A lot of conversation about him in the post-game, um, you know, analysis a lot of people saying that you know i was listening to shakira salman in particular and she was speaking about you know the matches that nicholas puran stayed at the crease for longer we saw a different uh, result of course those were wins for the west indies what did you make of that uh, piece of analysis and would you have promoted nicholas puran up the order I think I love when, you know, it's so easy for all of us to sit here at the end of the game and we analyze because obviously Puran advanced on the trap, missed it and was stumped. But had that one sailed out to the ground for six, we would all be saying, well, the fearlessness, the a new approach from Puran. And just judging on the way he's gone about things, I think he's trying to put emphasis on taking the game a lot deeper. But in the second T20 International, when he raced to that half century and was unbelievable, it was through sh shots like that. I think he's still working. We forget he's still a young player with all of his experience. He's still working on picking his bat as well. But to a wrist spinner bowling at him as a left-hander, he's always going to back himself in that matchup. And he took them from, I think it was 10 for 3 in the last game, to a winnable total in that game. And I think now, um, it didn't come off today, but had it come off, the West Indies could have easily got 175, 180, and we would be having a different conversation. So I can see the thinking. And to your second point, 
Um, in terms of him batting at three, I said it at the beginning of the series, I think I would like to see him there. I can understand why they back Johnson Charles, given the year he's had in T20 cricket at number three. But I think that experiment, especially against the quality spin of the Indians, continues to be shown up. And I would personally like him to come up to three. I think the West Indies have enough depth with Akil Hussain, who's rarely batted, Roston Chase, who didn't bat at all today. And even Hetmeyer, who's, yes, he's not getting scores, but I look at the amount of balls he's facing, and I personally think he's one of the best batters, and I would like to see him face more deliveries. You have the depth, you can use it by promoting Puran to three. Yeah, Nikhil, I think the comments came about Puran in particular because of the form that we've been seeing from Nicholas Puran, you know, because he's been hot when it comes to batting in this T20 series. A lot of people, you know, they, we have a lot of comments surrounding that. What about Johnson Charles do? Do you keep him or do you lose him for the next one? It's a tough one because I can see why the captain has improved drastically, especially against spin. But I just think on these surfaces, he's a player that likes to hit through the line of the ball and he seems to have figured out by the Indians. And I thought today with that start was the day that he would go big, but unfortunately he wasn't able to kick on. Personally, I think just for the balance of the team in this situation, I would like to see Puran at three. And it gives you options. Whether you keep Chase, you can bring back in Holder for the extra bowling option, or you have a few other all-rounders in there, like an Odin Smith, who can come in with that express pace, but also that six-hitting ability at the lower order. Yeah, OK. Nikhil, you just referenced the batting conditions so far in the series. But, of course, the uh, last two games, which will decide the series, will be played in Florida. Your thoughts on the conditions there and which of the two teams uh, might benefit more from the conditions in, in Florida? Well, unfortunately, I, I look at Florida, if I can remember from the last series, and it was, again, that slowish nature. And last, the more I watch this series and I look at India, who played three spinners today again, and they bowled a combined 34 dots. I think this Caribbean Premier League coming up is a real opportunity for many around the region, spinners especially, to look at the West Indies and say they're missing a second aggressive spinner. And I can take that position into the next World Cup because if we're going to be used to playing on these surfaces going into that T20 World Cup, we need a second aggressive spinner. It can't only be Akil Hussain. I expect more of the same. And unfortunately, it favors India drastically. But I also think the toss is vital because it seems to me that teams who are chasing have that ability to manage risk and also pick specific bowlers that they can go against, knowing that they only need eight or nine runs and over, which is just one boundary. So the toss is important, but also I think the spin in both sides is, is equally important as well. And name some aggressive spinners that you think they could turn to. Well, I'm excited to see Yannick Carrier, uh, who will get a first CPL lock in. I think he plays consistently for the Patriots as a risk spinner, but I haven't closed the door personally on Hayden Walsh as well. Uh, he still continues to work on his game. He has a new opportunity now with the Jamaica Talos. And I would personally like to see him, given the athletic ability he has, the batting ability, and just what he brings to the team, I would love if he could have a 15-20 wicket season and start knocking on the door again for West Indies selection. But we need an aggressive spinner uh, and preferably a wrist spinner as well for that variation back in the team. Yeah, Nikhil Otamchandani, thanks very much for chatting to us today. And I'm sure we'll be chatting again before the close of this series. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Yeah, Nikhil Otamchandani, Lance and Mariah, the West Indies. Um, Two victories back to back, so that was always good that they were able to back up the the, the victory in the first match. Um, I I have to be careful how I say this, but you almost expected India to respond, uh, not just because they're a quality team, but because we haven't often seen the West Indies put together a series of really high level performances in in whatever format. Um, and, and so today's response from India wasn't at all surprising. But I would like to think that there have been some good things coming out of this series for the West Indies. One of them for me is the captaincy of Rothman Powell. And, and we spoke about it last week, just how good Rothman Powell has been when he is captain. And we've put together some statistics as well, just to look specifically at how well he's done, both in terms of his own game, um, but in terms of the results that the team has had under his leadership. So as a batsman, he's averaging all of 54 
as West Indies uh, T20 captain, which again says a lot about his quality. Hopefully we'll get that graphic shortly um, that gives us the details of that. But I've been really impressed with him and also just his ability to motivate the men that he is leading. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been quite impressed with him and, and what he's been able to do with this yeah. T20 team in the short time that he's been captain. Yeah. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves quite yet. So there it is. He's played seven matches, five wins, um, two losses as captain. Now as a batsman, 218 runs. His highest score is 48. His average, 54 and a half. He's striking at 173. Now in and of themselves, those numbers might not look spectacular, but when you consider that he's coming in in that number six position, he's played a number of real impactful innings for the West Indies T20 side, including today. Um, although it was not in a winning effort, but that 40 from 19 deliveries got the West Indies up to 159, and without that, you easily could have been looking at 130, 140 instead of 160 um, that they eventually got. Yeah, the, the fact is there are players like that who tend to perform better when they have the responsibility of leadership. And Robman Powell is showing, is trending in that direction. Um, Chris Gale's batting performances had improved when he became captain. Carl Hooper's performances as captain was significantly better than when he was just a regular player. So it is not uncommon to see players being elevated to the captain's position and their own performances begin to improve. Yeah, I like what I see from him with regard to his performance improving and I also one thing that stood out for me is the way he utilizes the bowlers because I feel like the manner in which he does it it acts as a trump card for us as in you can't really predict you know how he's going to bowl um, and who he's going to bowl at what particular time and that has really benefited us it has worked in our advantage yeah it definitely has well Rob and Paul keep on doing what you're doing and if you don't do it well we'll be here to talk about that as well but today we're talking about how well you've done to this point we take a break we'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone